Gentlemen, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number 10 at Santa Anita. It's the grade two City of Hope Mile. These are some nice turf horses, perhaps preparing for the Breeders' Cup Mile later in Southern California in the fall. Let's take a peek at this. This is a pretty competitive group, Mike. Hong Kong Harry, the number four, is your five to two morning line favorite. He's as honest as the day is long. He's also the kind of horse that needs a little bit of a setup from the back of the pack, and we haven't seen him since late May. Yeah, a little bit of a layoff to deal with here. Boy, his overall form is really, really strong um, since he arrived in North America, Dan. I, I do agree that he should be favored in here. I do think he's the horse to beat in this race. But it's kind of a wide open race, and trips are going to be very, very important in here. And that's why we'll throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, because I'm really curious as to your take. Do you think Flavius is going to make the lead in here? I think they got to get aggressive with Astronomer. I know he's had a really good pocket trip, but he breaks sharp in his races, and he can win on the lead. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, you know, listen, I get that Flavius is coming out of some faster-paced races, and so that will factor into his pace figures and and maybe that will make him, you know, you know, up there right on the front in this race. But it's not really his running style, Dan. I, I didn't think he'd be on the lead in here. Maybe he will. I sort of felt like the five would probably take up the early running. A horse with good tactical speed. There's a tendency to outrun his odds is the number one, Il Bellator. He ran on the San Francisco Mile four starts back. He was a zillion to one. He got beat a half length. They ran him in the Shoemaker. He was a zillion and one to one. And he ran fourth. He ran quite well. And he's been running well on dirt in his two subsequent starts. He's capable of working out a good trip in this race, just needs to kind of get over the hump against these graded stake sources, but I can see him sneaking into the number at a price. Yeah, he's going to be a big price, so I won't knock him. And there are, listen, those two races that you mentioned, the San Francisco Mile, the Shoemaker Mile, uh, they give him some kind of a chance to sort of be around at the end of this race. I thought it was going to be really hard for him to beat this field, but maybe he can get a piece of it out of price. Let's talk a little bit about the two, War at Sea, who ran third in the Del Mar Derby last year, then went to the sidelines for a long, long time. He's now had two races back. His last race was the Del Mar Mile, a race where there were trips all over the place. I'm not sure he was the most compromised, but it wasn't the cleanest journey for him. Maybe he's ready in the third start off the layoff and is another horse that's tactical. He probably needs to run a career best. I thought he would have to run a career best. And, you know, the other way to look at him, Dan, that I think that you laid out pretty perfectly there is maybe he is a little bit dirtied up and he has it in him to take a little bit of a step forward here. The only issue that I really have with him at this point is, you know, he won the stakes race last June uh, going nine furlongs. Then he came back and he ran really well in the Del Mar Derby over that same distance. He got perfect trips in both of those races. Make no mistake, the number three hit the road is a very talented turf miler and has many back races that would make him tough in here. He was third beaten a half length in this race in 2021. The only problem is he's only raced five times since then. He's obviously had his share of issues, and I just haven't been thrilled with his two starts this form cycle. And now the blinkers come on, and I'm not sure what to make of that. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way as you do about him, unfortunately, because I'm a big fan of this horse. He was so good uh, back in 2021. Even they ran his, that start in this race at the end of 2021. He was so good in there. He was he, to me, he was best in that race and just got really unlucky not to win it. But things just really haven't gone well for him since then, Dan. I think you have to really question whether whether or not he's that horse anymore. I don't love either of his last two races, although two back. I didn't think he ran terrible in the wicker. Hong Kong Harry is a strong closing kick for Phil D'Amato. He's a horse that has run fresh in the past, so maybe you're not too concerned about this May layoff. And in the Shoemaker Mile last time out, he was sort of held up down on the rail on the backstretch in mid-pack. He did get clear on the outside, and he was running on at the end. He is the kind of horse that could appreciate a little bit of pace. He needs a trip. I don't think a horse like Hong Kong Harry is going to get stopped and then come beat you at a mile. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of trip he gets because there are races on his card that you can see where he just winds up so far back off the pace, but that's not always the case. Then I don't think he's a horse who has to be compromised in here if this pace gets slow because he's handy enough to get the right trip in this race. I mean, I don't know. I realize he's going to be the favorite in a kind of a wide open race, so maybe you want to look elsewhere. I think he's the best horse in the race, and I think he was best last time, and that trip did not work out for him at all. He was left with way too much to do in there, and he actually ran through the stretch. 
Simon Callahan's a real good trainer and he's handled the five astronomer very nicely. This horse was a stakes winner back in 2021. Then he missed a year and a half. Took him a race to find his best form. He found it last time not going a mile at Delmar, albeit with a perfect trip. He sat the pocket, but the pace was pretty fast. He gets to the outside. This horse on the lead's getting tired and he's able to wear him down. He runs fine in here. I agree with, with your take on it. I thought he got a perfect trip in this race, and he's going to get it done at the end. Nothing wrong with his performance, Dan. He's going to have to run better than that to beat this field, but he's very lightly raced. Fourth place finisher from that race came back to win a second level allowance at Kentucky Downs with a 95 buyer. Flavius has been around for a long time. We remember when Chad Brown had him on the East Coast. He just missed in the wicker two starts back. It was a race where he kind of made this little early bid to make the lead in the stretch, and then he got run down late by Dujour. Last time out outside post at Kentucky Downs. I don't take anything that happens at Kentucky Downs, especially if they're bad races. I take them with several grains of salt. So if you go back to the wicker, He's got a figure that makes him competitive, and he's tactical. He can be up or close to the lead. Yeah, listen, I, I won't argue too hard with any of that. I will just say that as far as Flavius goes, I'm with you on Kentucky Downs in general, except that this horse had run really well at Kentucky Downs in the past, including probably the best race of his life when he won that tourist mile. So maybe that's a little bit more of a knock on this horse that he was so bad last time, but I thought he ran really well two starts back in the wicker. Um, not way against him, Dan. If he's around that 12 to 1, I'd want to use him somewhere. Twist, I thought, was compromised last time out in the Del Mar Mile, coming on the heels of a win at Del Mar two starts back. It looked like Kent could have gotten out on the second turn and commenced a widest run, turning for home. He decided to stay in. He got pinched pretty badly in upper stretch. And then when he recovered, he came on at the end to run fifth. Maybe he doesn't win with a clean trip, but I got to think he would have been closer. I'm going, to, I'm going to agree with all that. I sort of looked at the race the same way, Dan. I'm not sure why he didn't just get out into the clear around the final turn. I don't want to say he had some kind of huge excuse in there, um, but he, he did have some trouble in that race, and he did make a little bit of a run there through the stretch. I don't know, man. He's not a great price on the morning line. I don't think I would take three to one on him. I think he's going to run better in this race. I'm a big fan of the eight Kathkin Peak, and I have a feeling he's dirtied up coming into this race. He ran some really nice races last year, including a second in the City of Hope Mile. He went to the layoff for a long time. He got a decent enough trip in the wicker, but it was his first start back, and you could just tell he needed the race. And last time out in the Del Mar Handicap, it was just another situation. I don't think the trip worked out for him. I think he's building up fitness and confidence with each start. Yeah, I mean, th those things are all true. I mean, he just shows up every single time. So he's, he's really hard to knock. And it feels like he can get any kind of a trip in a race, too. So that's to his advantage. The only thing that I don't really like about him, Dan, is he he never wins. I mean, he won those his first two starts stateside. He won both of those. He's won for 11 cents then. He's got an allowance win. And then there's all these stakes races where he runs really well. He finishes second or third. And he doesn't get the job done. When the stars align, the number nine, Iredeo, is capable of a big race, as he showed in the Shoemaker three starts back when he finished ahead of these at a giant price, although that day he got a really good setup and trip. He was able to save Brown most of the way, and he was rallying at the end. His two subsequent starts, not great from tough outside post positions, but this horse looks like he's pace and trip dependent. Uh, yeah, he is, and it, they may not go that fast in front of him. Um, his recent form is obviously rock solid, but I'm with you on that Shoemaker mile. Three starts back, Dan. To me, he didn't run nearly as well as Hong This horse finished second ahead of Hong Kong Harry. He didn't run nearly as well as that horse in that spot. Um, I'd rather have Hong Kong Harry. Let's take a look at our top picks for the City of Hope Mile, and you'd rather have Hong Kong Harry in here, and so do I. Uh, he does kick very strong in the stretch when you give him a clear path, and I'm expecting him to run very well again. Yeah, me too. I just I, I thought he ran really well last time, and I think if he can come back and run that race again in here, I just think he's going to beat this field. I just didn't really like anybody else in this race, then. I couldn't talk myself into anyone. I think there's a chance this pace might be quicker than time form U.S. projects, and maybe a horse like Iredeo and Twist can come running at the end, but I think the horse with the best closing punch is Hong Kong Harry. I agree with Mike in the City of Hope Mile on Saturday at Santa. Best of luck.